In this video, we're going to create a stopwatch countdown timer using the BBC Microbit. This is our emulator and this is what the final product will look like. First, we're using the LED screen made of 25 LEDs to display the number of seconds left in our countdown. Then we're going to use bus inputs, uh, bus buttons. The A button would be used to increment our timer, to initialize our timer. So to, per default, it will start at three, three seconds, but we can actually increment it. So for instance, if I want my countdown to start uh, with five, I've pressed the button A twice. My second input, button B, is going to actually start the countdown. So if I press it, it's now going to go down decrement by one every second and it's going to do so up until it reaches zero and then it's going to stop at zero that's pretty much it so this is how our stopwatch is going to behave we're now going to look at how to actually create the code behind it and to do so we're using the bbc microbit website microbit.co.uk and we're going to go into microsoft block editor to create our code so here's the block editor from Microbit, where we've got the basic blocks on the left-hand side, and we've got the emulator, the Microbit emulator on the right-hand side. And we're going to be able to drag and drop our blocks here. Now, to create the stopwatch, we're going to do it step by step. If you remember, the first thing that the timer, the stopwatch timer was doing is display the number of seconds remaining. And to do so, we need some kind of variables to store that value. So I'm going to go into my variable blocks and I'm going to use the block called set item two. Now item is the name of my variable. I'm going to rename this to something else. I'm going to rename it counter. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to set its default value. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to use the mass block with a number inside. And I'm going to default it to three. That's my first step. The next thing I want to do is get the micro bit to actually display that number using the grid. And I'm going to find this in the basics. Now it's going to do that forever. So it's constantly going to display the value of the counter. So I'm going to use a forever loop. And I'm going to use in the basic show number, this one here. Now I don't want to display the number two. I want to retrieve the content of my variable counter. So I'm going to go into variable and retrieve that variable here. Okay, that was my first step. Now, if I test this, I should see the number three appearing on the LED screen. Perfect, so the first step is working. Step two, we say that when we press the A button, we want that counter to increment by one every time we press it. So I'm going to go to my inputs because both buttons A and B are inputs. When button A is pressed, I want to change the value of my counter variable by one. So I'm going to use this block here and I'm going to apply this to my counter variable. So every time I press the A button, this will go up by one. And because this is constantly um, showing the number, it's going to refresh the screen. So let's try this, see if it works. Run. Here we go. Three. And if I press four, five, and so on. Okay. Next step is when we press button B, we want the countdown timer to decrement every second the value of the counter. Okay, so we're going to need another input block, which is an input here. When button is pressed, this time it's not going to be button A, but it's going to be button B. Okay, and what I've got to differentiate now is the state of my timer, because it could either be being initialized and being changed, or it could be starting to count down. And to actually find out which state my stopwatch is on, I'm going to use a variable. So I'm going to create another variable, set, and 
I'm going to rename that variable. Um, I'm going to call it um, counting down. Okay. And I'm going to either store the value true or the value false to that variable. So to start with, um, when I run my emulator, I want it to be set to false. So within the logic block, I'm going to find the false value. Okay, so this is a Boolean, which can either be true or false. When I press button B, and I'm going to set it to true. So I'm going to change its value. Now, the easiest way to do that is to copy or duplicate a block of code. So I can actually duplicate this, put it here. And when I press the button B, my, count, my um, stopwatch will be counting down. Now, it's not actually going to do anything at this stage. I need to implement the code for counting down. But at least I know that the state of my stopwatch is counting down equal true. So in my forever loop, I'm going to implement the idea of decrementing the value of counter. But I will only do that if the counting down is set to true. So I'm going to add an if statement here. And I will find that within um, the logic blocks. If, if, um, and logic again, I want to compare my variable called counting down, so within variables, if it is equal to true, then I will start um, the timer process, the countdown process. And to do so, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to wait for one second. So I'm going to use the post timer from the basics uh, blocks to 1000. And once one second has passed, I'm going to decrement my counter variable by one. So I'm going to change its value by of my counter by not by one, by minus one. So it's going to decrement, it's going to count down. Okay. Um, and that should actually do the trick. So let's try it. Let's run this code should start with the value of three. Yes. And if I press the B button, it's going to go down. One second, two, one, zero. Now, that's where the issue is going to be here, because it's now going to the value of minus one, and then minus two, and so on, which is not very um, much what we would expect. Okay, so I'm going to reset this for now. Um, so I need to find a way to stop um, the timer going down into negative values. Okay, I'm going to stop this for now. So we're going to use another if statement um, to decide uh, whether we need to carry on changing the counter or not. So within my logic blocks, if statement, And this time we want to check that the counter um, is um, towards zero. And if it is zero, then we're going to stop counting down. So I'm going to use a logic block again. Um, I may use one of those where I'm going to check if it's lower or equal to zero. And that's for the value of counter. So in my variables, I'm going to use counter. If that's the case, I'm just going to tell it to stop counting down. So I'm going to set counting down to false. And that's pretty much it. That should actually do the trick here. Let's try that. This is my initialized value of three. I can increment, so I can start at four. And then when I start counting down, every second it goes down one, and it should stop when it reaches zero. Perfect. That's it. You can now try this code uh, by yourself. Um, you can either use the, well, you will have to use the microbit.co.uk website. Um, you can use it with the emulator. And if you've got a microbit, you can even download it to your microbit and you will have a proper stopwatch timer. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. And if you want to find out more, you can visit 101computing.net to find more challenges around the microbit.